You're listening to Impulse to Innovation. The Institution of Mechanical Engineers podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Helen Mees. As a global community of mechanical engineers with over 120,000 members in 140 countries, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers has been at the heart of the engineering profession since 1847. The Institution's mission is to improve the world through engineering by sharing the latest news, views and insight into the creative world of technology and the people that make it happen. Ask most people what comes to mind when they think of mechanical engineering, and many will respond with railways and trains. Our foundations as an institution are indeed firmly built on the traditions of railway engineering, with engineers who saw themselves no longer as civil engineers building static infrastructure, but as innovators of moving machines, able to cross vast distances at speed, transporting limitless amounts of goods and people. Our first two presidents, George and Robert Stevenson, are still revered today as the fathers of the railway industry. And as we celebrate the institution's 175th anniversary, we can look back with some pride at the achievements and innovations that continue to be developed across the railway industry today. Those innovations can, of course, only take place if we have a new generation of engineers to drive them forward. The education of our future engineering workforce is undeniably woven into the institution's ethos and mission across all aspects of engineering, and rail continues to play its part in delivering that objective. This passion and enthusiasm for educating the next gen is manifested in the institution's railway challenge, held for the last 11 years at Stapleford Miniature Railway in Leicestershire in June. Planned and delivered by a team of institution volunteers from the Railway Division, the competition, which brings together teams of international young engineers and apprentices from across the rail sector, is, as one would expect, timetabled and executed with the utmost precision, with teams being tested on their technical skills, engineering knowledge and business acumen over three intense and very long days. The competition is friendly, yet fierce, as the Grand Champions Trophy is on show for all to see in the judging tent, making sure that every one of the competitors plays their part. It doesn't matter if you are an ardent train fanatic, a keen enthusiast of engineering outside your own field like me, or just a curious spectator you can't help but get drawn into the excitement and frustration as the competition's days progress. And of course, the whole thing is topped off by a ride on the mile-long track, with the wind in your face and the clackety-clack of the tracks beneath you. What could be more evocative of our engineering ingenuity? In this month's episode... Myself and the HQ AV team headed out to the Leicestershire countryside for a live recording of the sights and sounds of the Railway Challenge and spoke with the Challenger's chair, several of the volunteer judges, as well as team members, as they prepared their locomotives for the first day of tests. I won't give any spoilers as to who won, but you can read all about the competition in the link in the episode notes. I'm Simon Levinsky. I'm the uh, chair of the organising committee of the Railway Challenge. Uh, I'm from the University of Huddersfield, where I'm professor of railway engineering and director of the Institute of Railway Research there. Simon, thank you for taking time out of your busy day. Clearly, you are key to making sure that this event works. So we do appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. There are many key people to making this work. Of course, it's it's a huge team yeah. and you, you've got a lot of people involved and they're all volunteers, aren't Absolutely, they? Absolutely, yeah. Everybody's very enthusiastic to be part of it. Uh, we're certainly not short of volunteers. If anything, we sometimes have to think about, oh, do we really need all these people? But um, <laughs> no, it's really great, actually. And some of the people have so much experience. You know, they're people who come from the industry uh, and from universities. They have loads of experience and can help all of the teams to yeah. achieve the results that they get. Now, well, even though I'm not from a railway background, I'm 
loving being here and it's yeah. really nice to see some big, buzz. big There's engineering, buzz, there, which Helen, is great. Yeah. I wanted to start really by asking you, I, I mean, we're here obviously on the Friday of the competition. Yep. Everything has just started. So tell us a little bit about what happens and how the competition goes through the weekend. Yeah, OK. Well, of course, can I just go back? Because uh, many of the teams start almost a year ago, you know, when right. they first yeah, decide that they want to take part in the competition and they register and then they start making their plans. And then after a while, they realise that it won't work and they sort of change their plans. And gradually they build up to the crescendo, which is now the competition the final of the competition yeah um, so yeah today is the Friday so most of the teams uh, all of the teams have got here and unloaded safely got their vehicles onto the track um, and what they're doing now is uh, going through scrutineering okay where we check uh, safety uh, and check that they've met all of the requirements of the technical specification and the rules and that they're then safe to to run and to operate right okay then tomorrow the uh, the first part of the challenges starts. So in fact, actually today we, we, we started already doing some of the challenges. We have about seven or eight track challenges. Okay. Uh, different types of thing to test the, um, the, uh, the ability of the locomotive to pull a load uh, up a gradient, um, how quiet it can run, how smooth the, the, the ride is, how well the suspension works, um, how efficient it is, uh, and also a number of other challenges related to maintainability um, uh, things like that, where the teams have to remove a powered wheel set from the locomotive, which is quite a tricky thing. You yeah. know, has, they have to remove it, show to the judges that it's out of the locomotive, and then put it back as quickly as possible. So something like a sort of Formula One uh, <laughs> wheel change, pit, pit kind change of thing. but yeah. an awful lot <laughs> slower than that, really, because yeah. it's uh, more more complicated. Um, and then, so then into the Saturday and the Sunday, the the other track challenges, which I mentioned, they take place, uh, and then the final events, running out on the track on the Sunday. Day, um, right through to the prize awards on the Sunday afternoon. Yeah, and I've already seen the trophy. The trophy's out on display the right trophy's now. trophy's there. We have the names of the previous winners engraved onto it. So, yep, yeah. The, the so there's the incentive for the teams. Take that away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Now, the Railway Challenge has been going for quite a number of years now. Yeah, how how long has it been running? I think we're in our 12th year now. Right, OK. Yeah. So it's, it's <coughs> one of the <coughs> oldest challenges, really, that the institution yeah. has, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, Probably Formula Student was, a, was, a bit, was earlier than that. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, what value do you think it brings to the young engineers taking part and, and also to the railway industry as a whole? Yeah, it's enormous, really. I mean, I see it particularly as an academic in a university. Um, it's a real project that the students can can really get to work on many of the things that they do in their academic career you know very important they need to learn the theory of everything and they need to understand uh, all, all the maths and how to do complicated fluid dynamics and uh, use sophisticated computer tools but the railway challenge is one of the few things where it's a real project where they understand some of the other skills like working as a team yeah. vital skill as an engineer you know you it's fine being able to do all the complicated maths but if you can't communicate it to the other people in your team and get your message across, you're not going to be a successful engineer. So this is one of the few examples where they can really put that into practice. Other things like, for example, managing a budget. Yeah. For our team in my university, we say to them at the beginning of the year, OK, you've got a budget, it's £10,000 what it was this year and they say oh 10,000 know, pounds that's quite a lot of money and then actually they gradually realize as they go through the year and how you know things do cost money and the other thing they really learn very quickly is that you can't just decide you want something ring somebody up and get it the next day there's all sorts of bureaucratic processes that you have to go through related to procurement um, and then things like time management you know, dealing with all the complex tasks, sharing them out between them. So those are really important skills that they genuinely wouldn't get anywhere else in their academic career. So it makes them, uh, prepares them for their engineering career. Yeah, I was, I was talking to, to Ben earlier on and he was saying the same thing that, uh, you know, it's, it's a real opportunity to see what it's really like in the real world before yeah. they get out there and to experience yeah. all yeah. of those yeah. things, as you say, that yeah. perhaps they wouldn't <clears throat> know until they did get out into, yeah. into yeah. a real job. And of course, in the Railway Challenge, it's slightly different from some of the other challenges, not only student teams. We do have teams of young people from industry. Yes. So they are then able to, um, they, they come from a different direction. You know, they, ha they have perhaps more of the skills from working in an industrial situation, um, but they also learn very much uh, about teamwork and, and all of the other things. Yeah. And indeed, you've got one of the teams here that, that is a combination of the two, isn't yeah, it? Dar Darby that's right. and Alstom have joined yep, forces yep, this yep, year yep. Uh, to produce a, a locomotive. Yes. I mean, many of the teams do 
contact industry and get sponsorship from industry but some of them then as you as you say have gone that step further and managed to put a team together with people from the industry and from the university yeah and that of course is, is excellent you know and lets them share the share those skills and work together now i know you've already mentioned that you're from huddersfield mm. and hood rail are here yeah, this yeah. event so obviously there's a home crowd here for you but wh- <clears throat> what are, which of the teams do you think are, are looking you know really positive at this very <laughs> moment because there's a You're few out there, that the have, there, <laughs> there are a few out there who are having technical difficulties yeah, aren't there and, yeah. and already I would say most of them are having technical difficulties <laughs> you think actually. so <laughs> yeah well I haven't looked carefully carefully today some of them have you know almost operated out, on the, out of the box and sort of gone round gone round uh, the track seemingly smoothly but you know, when you look into the detail, even some of those are having difficulties. Yeah. There's some very impressive kit out there, really. You know, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. All sorts of innovations that teams have put in. We do encourage them as part. There is an innovation challenge within yeah. the within the competition uh, where they have to show that they've done something innovative that year compared with the previous years. Uh, and they have to write about that. Um, they actually have to write a sort of academic paper, so a short paper oh, okay. explaining what the innovation is. And then we give them marks, marks for that. Yeah. Um, and just around the, uh, the the different teams, so we've we've tried to encourage people to get involved who are related to the team. So you, as you point out, I'm from Huddersfield, but I take no part in the judging. So we've made right. sure that the judge the, the the judges are not associated with it, with any of the teams. The scrutineering can be as long as you don't scrutinise your own teams. <laughs> of uh, course, yeah. So we sorted that out. But then the judges are completely independent from all of the teams. Yeah, which fantastic. Of is good and, and and you also, as part of the railway challenge, that there are a number of sponsors, aren't there? who are involved yes. in, the, in the competition. Um, you, you know, th- some of them have been taking part and been involved in it from, from very fr- early yep. stages. Yep. Um, what in, what role do they play in, in this competition? It's really to the competition that we have the participation of the sponsors. And we've had it right from the beginning. Some of our sponsors have been with us right, right from, from the very beginning. Of course, we need funding. It's quite an expensive event to put on. Yeah. Um, so we're very grateful to those sponsors for making that possible. Um, but not only the money, they, many of them do come and get involved and advise the teams. We offer to all of the teams, particularly the teams from universities, that they can have an industrial mentor if they oh, wish to, right, not okay. essential. Um, and the sponsors and, of course, the uh, railway division, the board of the railway division, um, provide those experts who will give advice to the students. Yeah. The teams as well, of course, are free to get sponsorship and most of them do that. So I mentioned that um, our team has a budget from the university, but we say to them, if they want to, they can also contact uh, companies, which which they do, to get sponsorship, um, either in kind. So some of them say that they'll provide them with equipment, yeah, um, or sometimes cash as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's another important lesson that teams learn about marketing and explaining to people outside the organisation why they should engage with them in yeah, what they're doing. Yeah, being able to pitch your idea exactly. to so to a potential customer it's is, a vital is skill, isn't it? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. don't get that from. I would say anything else really in the university. Yeah, true, true. Well, Simon, I don't want to keep you any further today, but thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I don't know about the, everybody else, but I'm having a, a superb time. There's a real time. buzz here, Helen. It everybody who's involved just is excited wonderful. I'm it. constantly wanting to ask them questions and find yeah. out what they're doing. Yeah, so, you should do. So yeah. I don't and most of the teams are really keen to talk about th- it, as are, I'm sure they you are. found. They are. Yeah. They've been great. And we've got they're some little excerpts in the, in the episode where people, you know, yeah. people can hear yeah, us good. interviewing them. So, But thank well, you. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I'm really good. Totally loving it. Anyone who is um, listening to the show today, um, if you want to get involved with Railway Challenge, you can find it on the IMA Key website. And also, you know. Just type Railway Challenge into Google and it pops straight up. Absolutely, it does. It pops up straight away. And, um, you know, people can come and uh, on Sunday. Very welcome. All all spectators are welcome to come and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, if they're welcome young people, families, welcome to bring, bring children and. Yeah. Get them enthusiastic about railway engineering. Fantastic. Yeah. And if, they, um, if they're if they not able to come this year, well, hopefully they'll hear this and yeah. want to come next yeah. year. So that's great. Good. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Helen. Thanks very much. Uh, my name is Yi Wang. I'm from the uh, University of Huddersfield team. Yeah, so we, we still got a few things to do, some wiring to finish. Um, the locomotive's coming together, um, but um, we had to make some late changes, so things aren't as together as they, they probably should have been, but, but we're, we're, we're working on it. 
we had a really ambitious plan to make a lot of changes and those had not worked out for us so far so we've actually reverted back to an old design so so we're kind of crossing our fingers to if we if we can get a working locomotive that's a win for us so we'll take that um i think from a student's perspective right like i've worked in the railroad industry actually for quite a few years so so really just get an appreciation of what you actually have to do in practice when you when you work with a locomotive when you work with the equipment you know how to how to you know maintain them how to make sure your design will translate into a maintainable uh, product at the end of the day um, you know, a lot of things, a lot of designs work great on paper, but when you put them together, they may not, you know, you know, like components that have to be changed out that aren't easy to reach. Those would be the simplest examples of, of how a good design should be able to be worked on for, for anybody uh, with minimum uh, instructions. My name is Ben Vallely. Uh, I'm a rail project consultant for uh, many, many rail projects, um, but I've recently been working on Crossrail, getting the Elizabeth Line open, and I'm currently working on East-West Rail. Um, I've been a part of the Rail Division Young Members pretty much since I started in industry back in 2011, and I have done many roles within the institution, including currently being a uh, elected member of council, uh, but previously being the Young Members Board Chair of the whole institution and the Rail Division Young Members Committee Chair before that. We have known each other for quite some time, haven't we, Ben? We've been on we many, many committees <laughs> together. So it's really nice to have you here. And we're in a, a pretty dry Leicestershire right now. I was a bit worried this morning when I set off. I thought it was going to be raining. But uh, the, the locos seem to be all out on the tracks now and, and it's all looking really, really good. So you're focused on uh, the maintainability challenge part of the competition. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so the maintainability challenge is basically a way for uh, the teams to demonstrate their understanding of how uh, we conduct routine maintenance on the railway, uh, right. especially with rolling stock. The challenge itself is the requirement to uh, lift a locomotive, remove a driven wheel set, so one that's powered by a motor in some way, be it chain driven or gear, and then reattach it in a safe way and re-present a locomotive for operational service. Right. Um, that is a, a very key task. It's something that's done up and down the country, up around the world even, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's one of those things that, that we feel they, they benefit from. We make sure that it's completed safely. We make sure that it's uh, done in a, a fun environment, uh, but we make sure that everything is split. Um, there's four sections to it. Uh, getting a locomotive ready to lift, but without lifting. We ensure that we're happy with the lifting method and how things are going to happen. Lifting the locomotive, removing said wheel set, proving that all disconnections have been made, um, preparing the locomotive ready for lowering, including potentially having reconnected things that have been disconnected previously. Yeah. And then lowering the locomotive and, and getting the train ready to go back into service. Those four elements are all timed, right? Okay. Um, which obviously adds the jeopardy in because the, the teams <laughs> are competing against each other. But we make sure with with those stops in between those sections that we are happy that everything has been conducted safely. We will stop the teams if we need to um, to make sure that they're not going to injure themselves or others whilst they're conducting the task, and they learn how to do things in an efficient, effective way. In that way. Yeah. So I, I was out there actually while you were giving your your sort of pre talk about what they were needing to do. Um, how's how's it been going so far? Have, have they they all been successful, or are there still a little few teething problems with some of the locos? So we're early on in this year's competition. Um, we're on day one, effectively, of. of really digging into what these locomotives can do. There's scrutineering going on around us, there's ensuring that all of the competitors who are here are fit for running on the railway itself. Um, we have obviously started the maintainability challenge because that is, whilst a track-based challenge, it's also a static one. Yeah. It happens in location up at the station area and that allows us to understand um, what the teams are up to, that they're able to move their locomotives themselves, conduct things safely without many of the hazards that exist in and around any operational railway including here um, whilst we've got access to to lots of sort of hard standing areas to make things safe yeah it's gone well so far we've had a, a successful team attempt at it yeah there were a few teething troubles um but i know a, a few of the teams have the odd electronics gremlin which they're they're addressing uh, <laughs> and i'm confident we'll get a, a full set of trains running later this weekend hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me later yeah on. <laughs> well we, we will keep our fingers crossed though so i've been out and around talking to some of the competitors as well so some are very positive about it some are not so sure 
Um, but that's the whole purpose of this exercise, isn't it? To learn from these opportunities and learn from this experience and then translate that back when they get back out into industry. Yeah, that's exactly it. Making sure that they've got those transferable skills. We've got students here, we've got apprentices, we've got graduates. Some of the teams are mixtures of both. Um, because of the way we've set up this particular challenge versus some of the other challenges that the institution runs. And that's the, the key takeaway is having that ability to take skills that you wouldn't necessarily learn in a classroom yeah. and take those into hopefully a working life on the railways. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's... there's uh, there's so much that can be gained from really getting your hands dirty and, and really having a go and seeing why things fail and why things work. And, and I think that's that's a fantastic element to the competition. Now, you were um, young member chair, as you mentioned, uh, for the railway division. So as, as a young engineer, what what does the railway challenge mean to you and what, what do you think it uh, gives to uh, young engineers taking part? For me, I never personally got the chance to take part in it because oh, okay. when I was coming through graduate schemes, this was in its infancy as a, yeah. as a challenge. Um, I joined the Rail Division Your members fairly early on in my career and from there I've been able to progress into being part of the organising committee for this challenge, working forward um, to make sure that this is the best challenge we can we can have for these these guys and girls who are here this weekend and beyond. Yeah. Um, we make changes every year to this challenge to try and keep it current. We yeah. introduced an auto stop challenge the other year, which is something we see on autonomous systems or even manned systems like the central line in London that stops automatically at a given location. Right. The driver's there more to check that things are all okay rather than to actually drive the train in yeah. cer certain circumstances. So we, we do try and evolve the challenge as well to meet the needs of the railway so that they're gaining that learning and having that thought process around how a train works, how the railway environment operates and the various things that go around that with logistics and moving things around and shunting, um, which are all part and parcel of this weekend. So that's the key thing we, we feel this brings to younger members. You learn a lot on graduate schemes in the industry, you learn a lot on apprenticeships in the industry, Depending on your degree, um, you may have learned lots of different things at university as well or at college. All of those are perfectly valid and this brings you an ability to learn on the job, bring in teamwork elements, soft skills, project management skills that sometimes engineers don't pick up till later in their careers. Yeah, absolutely. You're doing that at a much earlier stage and, yeah. and I think that's really invaluable. Um, the ability to get involved with this is fantastic for me. I've loved every second of it. I come every year as best <laughs> as I can. Um, and yeah, it, it's just great to see the talent we've got. We've seen people on university teams progress onto graduate teams later on where they've gained jobs because they've been involved in this. Yeah. And they've been able to take that step up there in their careers as they've moved forwards. For young members, it's about engagement. It's about networking. And that's what's key to this challenge is having the ability to talk to the judges, the scrutineers, who are all people who've been in industry for between five and significantly more than five years. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's an invaluable way of meeting, learning and challenging yourself and, and colleagues and friends to put something in place that effectively builds something that works yeah. And, yeah. and be able to take those skills onwards no matter what their career path then holds yeah, yeah. in rail or otherwise. Yeah, they'll always take this with them. It'll be part of, of the stories they'll tell as they get older and, and encourage other young engineers into it. Ben, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I appreciate, you know, we've, we've got you uh, for a short while while you get back out there uh, to, to do some more scrutineering. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. My name's Ellie and I'm from Reading. What are you hoping to achieve? Are you hopeful you might win? No. <laughs> um, basically, history of the loco is we didn't really have it moving last year. So to actually be able to compete, the fact that we've just done that scrutineering is a huge achievement for us in itself. Obviously, we all have jobs. We all work from around the country. We're not like the universities. We don't get the same time. We don't have the same resource. So even to put that together is a huge achievement for us. And I'm PM this year and I'm really proud of the team. Um, coming from the team last year where it was like, can we even get it to move? To be in a position where we're competing, it's a nice thing, yeah.
Uh, hi, my, my name is David Pierce. I'm um, 345 Delivery Manager at MTR Elizabeth Line. Um, today I'm here as uh, Chair of the Young Members Committee for the Railway Division for the IMA Key, um, but I'm also uh, primarily a judge for the Maintainability Challenge and the Auto Stop Challenge. Oh, well. OK. So before we get on to the Auto Stop Challenge, um, tell us a little bit about your responsibility as Chair of the Young Members Railway Division. So really, you know, for me, it's sort of the outreach side of things. It's about encouraging young people to get into engineering, but, but also about supporting those who are already in uh, the industry as well and yeah. Um, obviously yeah with that particular rail focus I think the industry is typically it's aging um, and what we're really struggling to do is get new talent in and, and so it's a case of how do we how do we make it appealing how do we make it interesting yeah. how do we make it exciting but it's uh, and also looking at and one of the, one of my colleagues used quite a good term about um, a bit of a sort of a peership is that, is that the right word okay. <laughs> yeah you know acting as peers to people as a sort of not quite formal mentoring but almost like a buddy yeah. so that if someone yeah. has any questions they think is this a silly question I don't know I'll ask this person um, so that you know there are no silly questions it's just having someone to speak to yeah. um, as to help them get to get through the industry and building a little bit of confidence in themselves um, as, as you progress through as an engineer and you progress through to you know we support a lot of people through to chartership you know I'm relatively right. recently in the last couple of years gained my chartership Chartership as well. Yeah. Um, I think most of the professional uh, professionals that we've got in the Young Members Committee are also working towards it, or have already achieved it. Or, you know, we, we're not exclusively looking at chartered engineers. We have people um, going through the incorporated route or Eng Tech and things like that. But yeah. um, but we've also got people on um, year in industry placements as well who are interested, and in, you know, getting engaged with them encourages them to go. Oh, you know these guys are, had a great time doing what such and such event or just attending the meetings and going for socialists and stuff and it encourages people to go oh you know engineering I, I really enjoyed it it's a, there's an energy to it rather than it just being people in high-vis vests or um, you know lab coats hard and getting hats. filthy in hard hats yeah. exactly yeah 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 exactly. we are renowned for our hard hats right yeah so yeah it's, it's all about just sort of bringing that energy and enthusiasm uh, and interest to to engineering for young people really yeah. that's kind of yeah yeah right well you, you sound very passionate about it which is, I am, which yeah. is what it's really all about isn't it and, yeah. and across I I guess all aspects of um, the institution and mechanical engineering, you know, that creating that environment where people can feel nurtured as well as, you know, develop themselves professionally is all really part of what we do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about this auto stop challenge then, because uh, for I understand from Ben, this is a relatively new yes. introduction to the competition. So what's it all about? So it's all, it's all sort of looking at how we can reflect sort of the modern day technology on rail vehicles into these engineering challenges for you know students apprentices and all those kind of things so yeah. it's a case of how do we make that in a, in a way in which is going to be achievable for people rather than you know because the, the real life technology and things is vastly complicated to the point it was almost unnecessary but you know it's, it's adding some a, a slightly different engineering challenge into what could be a, just a mechanical thing yeah um, and we recognize that as an industry we're not just mechanical engineers we have to have an appreciation of various other things um, and, and basically what it is is you've got a point a and b um, a point a the uh, the train approaches and it scans what uh, basically a, a sensor of some sort um, the train will then automatically receive that signal um, and point b is a measured distance away i forget exactly how far it is away but they have to the train has to stop as close to that point as possible so it's not a case oh, of it okay. slams on the brakes and it just stops yeah. it has to come to a measured stop and uh, the the points are rewarded based on how far away you can get from that particular point oh, okay um, so we have had um uh, FH Aachen, who are here, um, one of the, the team from Germany, um, they weren't able to attend the last couple of years because of COVID, um, but they did send us a video of a setup they've got uh, over in Germany. They, they built a setup so they could send us a video of them doing it. Oh, wow. Um, and they, I think they managed to get to five centimetres away from, from the stop point. So, you know, th there's some absolutely fantastic stuff going on out there. Um, and But, you know, coming here where the track's a little bit more unpredictable and the yeah. weather conditions, obviously, you know, the great British weather and everything, yeah. <laughs> the wet weather can, you know, it's a a very real challenge that, yeah. that the railway faces um so yeah you have to sort of take all those things into account and try and achieve that 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 stop so yeah it's just a slightly different thing rather than you know just slam on the brakes and see what happens like any anyone can do that but doing something where you take into account the diameters of the wheels you take into account some of the conditions you could you know some people might look at doing sort of what we call wheel slide protection i don't know if any of the guys here have got that i haven't had the chance to look at that but um, that's a very real technology which is a bit like your uh, anti-lock brakes in a car oh, okay. so it stops yeah. them sort of skidding and then just basically going straight past the point um, yeah but um but yeah so that's the sort of the premise of it is get get to that stopping point as close as you can um 
Yeah. So, I mean, what you're saying there is actually uh, th- there's a, a specific challenge, but it can introduce lots of other engineering exactly. opportunities to explore that that perhaps some teams might might want to t- try and others yeah. is, try something different. Yeah. And it gives them an opportunity to really explore the, the various, um, I guess, existing technologies and possible um, innovative new new designs that Precisely. may not have been tried before. And that's one of the things I love about these engineering challenges, you know, like this one and the and former student and the the um, the US UAS challenge as well is that it's all interpretations of the the rules as yeah. well it's a bit like you know if you compare it to formula 1 for example you've got your set rules but Every single team here has a different setup. Like every single one is different. Um, you know, you might have some some people with gear chain, uh, gear chain drive. Sorry, chain gear drives. Some with direct gear drives. All yeah. these kind of different things. Um, and exactly as you say, every single auto stop one is different. It's not like they've all sort of converged on the same option. Yeah. Every single one is different. And I think that's fantastic. It's, it's engaging the the brain cells in slightly different ways. And then all of the teams. All the teams look at each other's designs as well. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to ask you about that. You know, yeah. because obviously, right now, where they are, they're all trackside together. They can yep. all see each other's um, locos. They all have an opportunity to go and check check each other out and see what what they've done. This is the first time in in the competition where they'll have that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it, there's a lot of friendly rivalry, right? Yes. Isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's kind of enjoying themselves, and and you know, but they do learn from each other. I mean, that's yes. the important part of it. Absolutely. Isn't it? And a lot of it is about um, there's a lot of camaraderie as well between the teams because they've all worked so hard to be here. Um, you know, I think it's slightly different in this challenge in that some teams are returning, some people are returning into it um, year on year. Yeah. Um, whereas I know sort of when I did Formula Student, we did it for one year and that was it. And then there's a whole new team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of learning as well. But yeah, you know, if a team needs help with a certain tool, for example, if they need a certain component or something's broken, then the teams will often just sort of huddle around and be like, how can we help? Because everyone wants it to work. Everyone wants each other's locos to work. And I remember last year, obviously, we, we didn't have too many, unfortunately, too many. Teams. I think we had four teams yeah. um, last year. But when the fourth one got working, it was right at the end when the last one got working, but everyone was so happy for them because yeah. they thought every single one is working. You worked so hard over the last four days to get it to work, just just to work, not necessarily to sort of win, but just to work. <laughs> yeah. um, it was brilliant. Uh, and so that's one of the things I really, really like about this challenge. And, and the buzz here and the atmosphere is, is great. There's such a great community spirit, um, everyone coming together. Just to, basically, it's a celebration of engineering, really, and people's achievements, which which yeah. I love. It's yeah. brilliant. Well, it, for me, I think it's it's celebrating the long history that the, the Amaki have had with railway yes. right from our birth really up to today and of course we're celebrating our 175th anniversary um, so it's great to see you know the technology going forward and the technology being put it to, into practice yeah. in today's competition so David thank you so much for joining me it's, it's been a pleasure to just feel the buzz and, <laughs> and uh, you know enthusiasm from you um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in the rest of the competition who, who do you think's got a good chance this year is it, is it a tricky one to uh, I mean I must say looking at uh, without giving anything giving too much of my view away uh, I think you know the, the Arkan guys have turned up yeah. with another very very I mean, impressive loco I mean it's an unusual loco as well it isn't is. it it's for, for, uh, for our obviously listeners it's, it's actually tricky triangular shape yeah isn't it yeah, yeah. it's not it's <laughs> not a square block that you would expect a loco yeah. to look it's it's but it's, it's flashing you know, lights it's an, and yeah it does it's got disco <laughs> lights yeah but it's a, you know it's an iteration of a design when they put when they came and they won a few years ago it was a it was a box but they've come and they've made yeah, they've they progressed their design and that's exactly what we want to see yeah so yeah no i'm really excited to see what they can do excellent yeah. thank you you're welcome So I'm Janusz Szewski and I'm from Putrain team from Poznan University of Technology from Poland. How close are you now to having the loco uh, running? We need to get some issues that uh, are from basically delay, delayed uh, orders that we have managed to order a lot of time ago but uh, there were no parts at uh, stores or something. Uh, mm. There were many uh, discussions about that. Okay. And uh, now we need to move it together and uh, run with the real uh, parts that will be there for forever. Yeah. Forever for next year, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, firstly, we were running uh, with the spare parts not originally designed for that. So uh, we could say that the first test will be the here at Stafford Ford. The well, first real test that 
uh, there are all parts together that we want to be there. So uh, the way that we designed it. I think you've got a good chance. Uh, all teams are so high qualified that uh, when we came there and saw the constructions, we think, wow, <laughs> it's so, so mad. They made so good job. Uh, but then they're coming to us and they're saying the same to us, so I think uh, there is a high level. This year it's uh, it's really high level of the competition. Uh, basically the Aachen team with their resets that just flew out in one second, even less. Uh, we'll see. That's all for this month. In next month's show, we will be talking with past, present and future presidents of the IMACI to reflect on the relevance of mechanical engineering in today's very digital world, why the institution needs to play a greater role in driving political change and how diversity of our engineering community is so vitally important. If you would like to send any questions for the president's panel, Email us here at Impulse to Innovation Podcast at podcast at imekey.org. You've been listening to Impulse to Innovation, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers podcast. Thanks for listening. We'd love to hear from you. So if you'd like to share any news, or any feedback with us, then please email us, podcast at imekey.org. All the information on this episode can be found in the episode notes. <laughs>